protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com One of the most anticipated movies in a long time is about to come out. The Dark Knight Rises. Get ready because we are going to leak, spoil, and decode the new Batman film that's coming out. We're gonna get into the meaning behind the meaning, the secrets behind the secrets. But first understand, this is one of the most successful propaganda franchises out there selling tyranny for all of you that say it's just a movie for more than 50 years the department of defense has paid and financed for most major action films they all have a unified propaganda message selling you on the idea that you're powerless and that you can't protect yourself only shadowy groups by violating your rights and liberties can keep you safe Throughout the Batman franchise, any vigilantes other than Batman are powerless, pathetic, fat, stupid, or psychopathic. To understand the conclusion of the Dark Knight series, we first have to go back to the beginning. In Batman Begins, a secret society known as the League of Shadows, led by Ra's al Ghul, played by Liam Neeson, seeks to put a poisonous psychotropic drug in the water supply to drive Gotham, the archetypal New York, into total insanity. Then he will bring order out of the chaos. And as all informed people know, governments have been fluoridating water supplies for more than 60 years, causing brain damage and cancer. So we see here in the first installment a revelation of the method or the power structure showing you how they operate that there are secret societies that manipulate for good and bad. Bruce Wayne, the aristocrat, the banker, the globalist, has his secretive system, and then there's the evil uh, outlanders trying to come in and take over. In part two, Batman, the Dark Knight, we're introduced to the Joker. Now let's analyze the underlying messages here. He is a nonconformist, a libertarian type who makes his own clothes and burns money. Nothing. No matches on prints, DNA, dental, clothing is custom, no labels. He doesn't go along with the mainline consumerist corporate culture. And so he's got to be a murdering psychopath who enjoys blowing up hospitals, bridges, ships, and killing police officers. But our hero, the rich banker industrialist Bruce Wayne, have developed a system to hack into cell phones and use them to create a sonar system that can give them a three-dimensional view of what's happening by using Defense Department technology they were developing to hack into all the cell phones and use them as audio microphone systems. They're able to save the city because they violate everyone's rights and spy on them without warrants. So again, it aids and abets and gives comfort to criminal elements in the NSA 
who on record are spying on the American people and using all of our appliances from smart meters to computers to smartphones to spy on us. All of it is pro-tyranny propaganda. We now move from part two to part three, the dark night rises. So let's start decoding the dark night rises. Number one, look at the name, the dark night rises. And we're told that he's willing to give it all up. You've given them everything. Not everything. Not yet. Oh, you've already given these people so much. I haven't given everything. So he's this Christ figure, this dark Christ who is fighting the evil secret society led by Bane, who is coming to destroy Babylon, the beautiful city. Here's a few juicy spoilers. Batman gets his back broken in a fight with Bane. At the end, as Bane is dying, we learn that he's a Darth Vader character who can't survive without the mask, which is the recurring cyborg archetype that humanity can't live without machines. Who is Bane? He's a symbolic demon, a destroyer, a symbol of the Hegelian dialectic, order out of chaos. To the conscious mind, these symbols don't register. But to the subconscious, they are clear commands, just like you're a computer. The power of Hollywood, the power of images to program the mind is not debated. And the Pentagon and Madison Avenue know that. Remember back in 1975, when for more than two years, the beaches were almost empty in the United States and areas of Europe and Australia because people were so scared that a giant shark was going to eat them. Psychological warfare chiefs certainly paid attention to that. Even though on average, less than five people die a year from great white shark attacks worldwide, people would not go in the water and were demanding shark patrols and more lifeguards for a non-existent threat. And that's what these movies do, not just these Batman films. Every one of these films has terrorists blowing up major cities constantly to create the psychological illusion that there's big sharks out there that wanna eat you. And there's terrorists under every table that wanna attack you and your family. And you notice at the end of Jaws, the shark has been killed. He's been defeated, but still the beaches remained empty. You are being subconsciously programmed. When you go in one of these movies and just turn yourself over to it and suspend a disbelief, you become a willing victim to have your mind literally programmed in that key fear state. Because when the mind is in that fear state, it is wide open to be reprogrammed. And now in the new film, we see the football game blown up. We see the police helpless if the state doesn't take every right we've got and turn our children against us and set up highway checkpoints and launch 30,000 armed drones and listen to our phone calls, then none of us are safe because the non-existent threat of Osama bin Laden and al Qaeda and Bain are gonna get us. The key to understanding why the social engineers want males in an arrested development junior high mentality state is simple. Through thousands of films and video games, we are bombarded with the idea that threats always come in the form of a giant evil monster or terrorist who openly announces themselves, not through slow cultural death. And men are presented with an idea of Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Herculean figure, uh, or somebody like Batman, defeating the enemy all by themselves because the public is powerless. That's why now when I talk to so many men, they say, oh, you're such a hero. You go out and confront politicians. You go out and you know fight for freedom. I'm glad you're there. What do you mean? I'm just an average person like you. We're not fighting big green Martians from Mars. We're not fighting uh, you know, shadowy groups like Bain, unless you talk about the private Federal Reserve that's hijacked this country. We're fighting the new world order. We're fighting a corporate takeover system with regulations and, 
and red tape that doesn't announce itself as an enemy, but that just oozes in with bureaucracy to dominate and usurp our lives. We're fighting the UN and Agenda 21 and a federal government bought and paid for by foreign interest engaging in treason. When you're conscious or awake, aware, watching, when you don't suspend your disbelief, you see the programming, the manipulation, the hypnotic suggestions right there like it's written on the wall. But when you're unconscious, like a general population, you are wide open to be victimized by this programming. Hey, I like a good action adventure and movie as much as the next person. There's nothing wrong with enjoying a film if you're aware of the implanted images. But it's important that people become conscious of the manipulation that's going on. So please share this presentation with your friends and family and visit infowars.com forward slash Batman where we've posted some other examples of brainwashing that are taking place in our culture. It's August 31st, 2010. Three days from now, Machete is going to premiere in theaters across North America. Going back about three months ago, Hispanic members of Robert Rodriguez's film crew here in Austin, Texas, contacted me and said they were really concerned about the film's message and that it was very, very divisive and that it would reflect badly on Hispanics, not just create racial division. Then I got a copy of the script, the script that they used for the film. And it is a race war that bills white people as the devil. And uh, Mr. Trejo, the star, Machete, or Machete, uh, as a folk hero who they then pray and worship at the end of the film. And it's got gringos out sacrificing, you know, crucifying Catholic priests, killing Hispanic children. It's over the top. It's like a Hispanic version of Birth of the Nation. I mean, this is really dangerous stuff. And then Rodriguez told Ain't It Cool News that, okay, I had too much tequila and I am going to cut some stuff out of the film. It could cause some problems. And I thought, wow, you know, that was my job was just simply to point out to him that people on his own crew were concerned and that he should think about what he's doing because this could cause racial conflict. I'm all for his First Amendment, but I have my First Amendment right to criticize it. And I said, let's wait and see what comes out when the film's released. Well, then I happened to be in a hamburger place with my kids Saturday, and I see the front page of the Statesman dealing with the film uh, Machete. Commission must decide if Machete qualifies for funds, and they've got yours truly, Alex Jones, quoted in here, and the producer of the film is in the newspaper saying that we made it up that we have the script. Really, we made up the Arizona trailer with all those big stars saying those things. Uh, we made up that we got the script. We made it up that Robert Rodriguez told Ain't It Cool News that he did cut stuff out because it was racially incendiary. In the special Cinco de Mayo message to Arizona. We did it cross the border. The border crossed us. Now, I don't know what film is being released on Friday, but I am concerned uh, about the fact that it's going to hype people up to go out and commit acts of violence with all the stuff going on in Arizona. So we're going to find out this weekend whether or not Rodriguez has put out his race war film. And we're going to find out if this guy is a total opportunist because what this does is it plays on fears of immigrants. It tries to uh, export America phobia that does go on in Mexico uh, to the rest of Latin America all over Central and South America and on the island of Puerto Rico, they are putting up these big posters with an image of a bloody machete and a hand dripping with blood saying, everyone with machete, like it's a political uprising. And if you know Central and South America and Mexico's history, the machete is the symbol of the peasant uprising because they've been disarmed. They're not allowed to own guns, so they use their farm implements. Uh, the machete is kind of like the pitchfork uh, in European lore because they were disarmed. And so here's Rodriguez with a worldwide promotion of this in the streets of Latin American cities with an image of a blood dripping machete. And then when you go see the film, at least from what the script says, it's all about evil gringos that must die because they're uh, oppressing the Raza or the race. 
And it's also come out that the Ford Foundation, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, and others have given billions of dollars total to this liberation theology at the universities, not just here in the United States, but all over the world. So the system wants Hispanics, whites, and blacks to beat each other's throats. And they don't want Hispanics to feel like they're Americans and become pro-Second Amendment. No, it's got to be a machete. Do you get the anti-gun message here? Uh, in so many horror movies and films, the people are always you know, preyed upon by the criminals or the zombies because they don't have guns. Hollywood will not show that image of people with guns defending themselves. So we've got Robert Rodriguez blurring the lines between politics and his race war film and then having his surrogates, uh, the producer, in the Statesman saying, there's none of this in the script. None of this is going on. This is crazy. When his own people contacted me, and I have the script, and we have the Arizona trailer, and Rodriguez is out there saying, yeah, I cut this stuff out. It goes a little too far. Uh, so I'm seeing a lot of deception from their camp. And for their sake, I hope they have cut the really hardcore race war stuff out. Because if that actually showed in theaters around the country, I'd say 99% chance you're going to get some stabbings and some killings. My final point is this. I've really been researching Mexico in depth for more than 15 years, reading what anthropologists, sociologists say from Mexico and the United States. And uh, just over the weekend, I talked to a lot of my Hispanic friends, some of which actually grew up in Mexico. And they said, Alex, we know that the big foundations are teaching that the United States belongs to Mexico to create division. We understand what's going on. And they said, immigrants like the 72 that were just murdered uh, right over the Texas border in Mexico, come up from Latin America and are held by Los Zetas and the Mexican Mafia. And men, women, and children are gutted and killed and in many cases raped first as part of an act of terror against these people. And the rich Mexicans in the United States, they're just like poverty pimps, just like Obama, using racial politics to exploit and to basically fire up Hispanics to kind of buy into this whole narco-terrorist El Jefe uh, worldview. And that it is really a lot of Hispanic Americans who are feeding and using the immigrant community. And that's why they're teamed up uh, with the big Fortune 100 companies who also want cheap labor and to allow Mexico to export its revolution to the United States. And so it's just sickening elitism, the same way uh, Mexico has used anti-Americanism as a distraction from its own internal uh, problems for the last hundred years. This is now just an exporting of that to the United States. And I've seen in the news countless cases of mayors uh, and others who are Hispanic, who it turns out are coyotes, who have Hispanic immigrants as slaves. Uh, they bring them over here. They hold their families in Mexico. They make them do drug runs for them over and over again. And so really, we have to realize that especially Central and South American immigrants coming up through Mexico uh, are completely abused and are being used uh, by the corrupt El Jefe types that run Mexico and now much of the Southwest. And I guess that, you know, that's who he's rich and powerful. He's made hundreds of millions of dollars. That's who he hangs out with is the Carlos Slim types uh, that dominate Mexico. And it looks like Robert Rodriguez is really a cold-blooded guy exploiting a lot of people and creating r racial division in the process. But uh, we'll see what film he releases. But, you know, this isn't a joke. Uh, Mexico has fully collapsed. Every week, mayors are taken in front of their families and murdered. In some cases, they're raped first as an act of dominance. Immigrants by the hundreds every week are tortured and murdered and have money extorted out of them. And you never hear La Raza or Mecha or all these big race groups talking about that. Uh, they want to distract Hispanics with boogeymen of the Minutemen who've never killed any immigrants. But, but in this movie, do. Uh, you know, they'll give them that myth of who's killing them, when really who's killing them is the CIA-funded Los Zetas and the Mexican Mafia and the rest of them that are killing U.S. Embassy staff, kidnapping citizens. Uh, our police are being paid off by them, rolling over. And Robert Rodriguez just gets to glorify it and be the big king up there and, and uh, you know, create all this racial division and have movie posters put up in Puerto Rico and everywhere else, you know, saying, everybody get with machete with a symbol of Latin American revolution dripping with blood. And meanwhile, the big banks are funding the whole thing because after the U.S. falls, we'll all be like Mexico or Guatemala, nowhere to run. 
And that's just their plan where we're all killing each other. I don't know if Rodriguez has played into this psyop and is being used or whether he's a really a cold-blooded person. Uh, but I've seen a lot of doublespeak out of uh, him and his crew, and I just hope that they uh, have thought about what they're releasing. I mean, I know supposedly in the script uh, that Machete's fled to the U.S. because of drug cartels come after him. Uh, but, but, but then he finds the ultimate evil uh, is the gringos. The good news is Hispanics worldwide are sophisticated and intelligent, and they have discovered that the major foundations are funding all of this to create division. And we're going to stand together against the big central banks, against the drug traffickers, against this entire global crime syndicate that's getting rich off of the blood, sweat, and tears of immigrants and other people. And we're going to decriminalize drugs and take away your main funding mechanism that has empowered this criminal takeover of society. Rodriguez, you decided to go forward with this Mexican exploitation film uh, with a radical revolutionary edge. And when people freaked out about it, you pulled it back and denied it even existed. Uh, but now we know you've got posters going up all over Latin America with blood-stained hands with a bloody knife. And uh, let's just hope that what you're invoking, whether consciously or unconsciously, doesn't come true because you will have literal blood on your hands and you will be liable. But maybe that's the type of fame you're looking for. To learn more about this and other vital topics, visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast or subscribe to the free podcast at InfoWars.com. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. America is starting to wake up to the fact that Barack Obama is becoming a dictator. You know about him launching wars in Libya, Syria, and other areas, and when Congress comes to him and says, you've got to get authorization from us under the law, under the Constitution, he says, no, I don't, because I have the UN and NATO. That is treason. Obama has been having the ATF put in new anti-gun regulations outside of law. And now the ATF's talking about banning most shotguns with a new regulation. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to stand up to Barack Obama and let him know and let the prostitute, accomplice, collaborator media know that America is waking up and will not put up with this type of executive abuse. The latest outrage, Obama came out last Friday and he said, I'm going to legalize 80,000 illegal aliens to begin with because I can't get Congress to pass the law. Just a few years before that, he said that he'd like to act like a dictator, but that he couldn't because of the Constitution. I know some people want me to bypass Congress and change the laws on my own. Believe me, the idea of, of doing things on my own is very tempting. Now he's saying he can do this if he wants to. This is treason. It is important to create a grassroots campaign to say no to this. So we're doing something new. Two new contests. $5,000 prize for whoever creates Barack Obama flyer posters and posts them in legal and lawful areas, check your local laws, videotapes it, uploads it to YouTube so it can go viral. You've only got four and a half days, midnight this Friday. Print off the flyers at InfoWars.com or create your own poster. Post them in legal lawful areas, shoot video of it, Upload it to YouTube, send it to contest at infowars.com, and we're going to announce the winner next Monday. You're not going to have to wait very long on this contest. And then two weeks after that, three Fridays from now, we're going to have part two of the contest. And if you win part one, you can still be in part two. $10,000 prize. Now, what we're going to do is take these videos and post them so that other people will see the example and go out and post more. We did this a few years ago with the Joker contest, Obama as a Joker, and the media took our bait. They said, how dare you show our gracious Fuhrer uh, as a Joker? This should be illegal. 
It is a poster showing the president made up like the Joker. And as West News Amanda Ober reports, whoever is responsible may face criminal charges. That you shouldn't be able to criticize Obama. It was in hundreds of newspapers, more than 20, 30, 40, 50. I lost count TV stations from Japan to Ireland to the United States. This is going to be even bigger because these authoritarian pigs of the New World Order are going to try to say it's wrong to show Obama as a dictator. In fact, some of the posters we're making say, murdering dictator, his face, Infowars.com. Or scumbag dictator, Obama's face, Infowars.com. Our forebearers in the 10 years leading up to the revolution in 1776 did the same thing. They decried King George III. They decried the corrupt system and were basically politically demonized for it. We have to identify that Obama is becoming a dictator because the powers that the executive is grabbing will just be passed on to the next president unless we decry them now. The traitorous Congress has been told they're slaves of the executive and have gone along with it. So it's important to let that scum know that we're aware of them. Follow the link below me to the contest rules. It's very, very easy. This country is in deep trouble and we the people will call out this criminal who is saying he'll arrest us under the NDAA, he'll kill us, he'll shut down the internet, he'll hijack our smartphones and take it over with his propaganda messages, that he'll launch wars without congressional approval, that he'll do whatever he wants. Enough is enough. Let the maggot Barack Obama and all of his criminal mafia that worked for him, that staged Fast and Furious and so many other crimes know that you're awake to him. Last time the Obama Joker poster went super viral. This time it's going to go even bigger. Last time it was only $1,000 in prizes. This is $15,000. Part one and part two of the contest. This is your chance to strike a blow against tyranny and exercise your First Amendment and to have a chance to win up to $15,000. It's all posted at Infowars.com and at the link below. I leave you with the words of Thomas Jefferson. When the government fears the people, there is liberty. When the people fear the government, there is tyranny. It's time that would-be dictators know the sleeping giant that is America and free humanity is awakening. It's Stop Dictator Obama Contest at Infowars.com. Control freak tyrants are going to hate this. Have you been to InfoWarsShop.com lately? Express your inner patriot with these brand new InfoWars t-shirts. Say it loud with the InfoWars bullhorn shirt. Or educate the sheeple with the Bill of Rights shirt. Grope the public's mind with the TSA shirt. And with this shirt, you can let the dark side know of the Rebel Alliance's power. All available at InfoWarsShop.com. For more than six years, I've talked on the air about creating a social network. PlanetInfoWars.com is in its beta phase. We're just launching it. And I want to invite all of you out there to be in on the ground level. Planet InfoWars is about people coming together, forming activist organizations, getting involved politically, hunting and fishing, gardening, dating. This is a place for people who love freedom to meet and to talk and to write and to post information. And I give you this pledge. We are not gonna spy on you and sell your data to the new world order. PlanetInfoWars.com is free, so people who love freedom can get together. Connect with people who are awake and know what we're facing. Be active, organize, take action, go viral, create, contribute, resist, because resistance is victory. You are victory. It's waiting for you to breathe power into it. PlanetInfoWars.com
recently had a chance to watch the film, The Road, based on the novel by Carmack McCarthy. And to say that this film is a masterwork is an understatement. This is probably the most powerful film I have ever seen. And it has so many different messages that operate on so many different levels. It has archetypal snapshots from things that have happened throughout human history. And it really is a story about the good guys versus the bad guys and how tyranny and barbarism is the great enemy of civilization and humanity uh, and how love is, is, is such a wonderful virtue and that it isn't until times of great adversity uh, that we see the worst and the best in humankind being expressed. And it made me think of a uh, Victor Hugo quote from the French philosopher, adversity makes men and prosperity makes monsters. And another quote by John Quincy Adams, courage and perseverance have a magical talisman before which difficulties disappear and obstacles vanish into air. Being a student of history, this dystopic near future uh, film was very unsettling. Uh, I don't have nightmares about Big Brother coming to get me. I don't have nightmares about my children dying in car wrecks. Uh, I, I don't really have nightmares. And I've been having uh, very uh, disquieted dreams. I wouldn't even call them nightmares since watching this film uh, because I have studied Leningrad and the close to a million people that died in that siege and the years of cannibalism that sustained the population under the Nazi onslaught. I have studied what happened, of course, in Rome uh, and uh, during the different phases of its collapse. Uh, I've looked at Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the hundreds of thousands killed by the A-bombs at the end of World War II. Uh, and this film has a pro-Second Amendment uh, message. I mean, if you don't have a gun during this collapse, you're in deep trouble. I've seen that Hollywood meme of victim disarmament being pushed over and over again where you always see these horror movies and things where nobody's got guns to fight back against the killer, uh, which is just asinine. It never you know, really telegraphs that message of how important the gun is and how it can be used in the hands of bad people for oppression or in the hands of the good guys uh, to protect themselves and their family. But the overall message in this film is intense love and commitment and the love that a parent can only have for their children and really a growing experience that you have uh, that's built into us uh, in our very genetic code that once you have children, uh, you really grow up, or at least you should grow up to another level of understanding that it's your children's future that matters and their protection that matters. And when you understand that loving others through your children is important, it teaches you the larger truth of life that we all are interconnected as a society, as a species, and that if you love your children today, don't you love your unborn great-great-great-grandchildren just as much if you could hold them in your arms? Why then would you go along with illegal wars of aggression like Iraq and Afghanistan? Why would we accept the new good guys uh, on shows like 24 torturing people's children in front of their parents to get answers? Why are we basically being dehumanized by design? And the modern system that we're all living under right now is a form of creeping death, where the social engineers literally traffic in our psyches and our souls. And people have lost their empathy and their humanity, and they've been made so envious and jealous and so self-centered that they lose the greater sense of community. And we are literally submersed in toxins and additives and GMO, all of which on record have been designed to reduce our fertility and uh, to cause increases in cancers. And the entire world population uh, is fascinated now with catastrophe and collapse films because at a subconscious level, the subconscious mind is much more powerful than the conscious mind. And the human computer knows that humanity is in a crisis on so many levels, but we can't recognize it because it's not a truck coming over a hill you know, with 15 cannibals in the back that are planning to butcher you and your son. It is a scientific corporate Borg that analyzes future trends and that tracks everything we're doing to where they can not just predict the future in mass movement or individual movement now with Google NSA type software, 
but they can also guide the future and create false trends through the Madison Avenue PR machine. And so we're losing our human destiny. We're losing uh, our connection to the land. We're, we're losing everything that makes us human. I mean, it is a horrific thing to have all these government textbooks and documents that we cover on the show where they admit they're poisoning the water, they're poisoning the food, sperm counts are down by over 80% in the Western world, to know that HIV was a genetically engineered bioweapon, uh, to know that they are purposefully adding mercury to the corn syrup, to know that they're feeding GMO crops to animals that is causing them to become sterile, and it's passing on these chemical toxins to humans, to know that the uh, BT corn that grows its own natural pesticide is wiping out the bees. And then in all the studies, it's causing massive organ failure in lab rats. Folks, that is even much more horrific than this nightmare dystopic film that has perfectly presented one spectrum of human collapse. And it also has some global warming propaganda in it uh, about the atmosphere uh, collapsing. But what's strange is NASA just put out a report this week saying that uh, they've seen the greatest atmospheric collapse in the last hundred years of recorded history in 2008 and 2009, but NASA was actually honest and said it's because the sun became uh, semi-dormant and was not putting off any Coriolis uh, solar flares. And so that the Earth itself has actually cooled in the last decade. It was heating up, uh, and that that cooling trend and that ionizing radiation that forms cloud nuclei uh, has not been there in the last decade, and so the atmosphere began collapsing. Thank God the sun just flared back up. We now know that giant asteroids hit the Earth conservatively every few hundred thousand years, and it's the same with megavolcanoes, like the one in Yellowstone. We know it's not happening every 10 or 15 million years like scientists previously thought. We know that the sun uh, is not stable, that it cools off and heats up, uh, we know that we are living on a tiny little blue-green jewel floating through space way out in the boondocks. And then when you read the globalist plans where they openly want to destroy the family and basically mechanize humanity and turn us into basically biological androids, you realize that the threat in the short term isn't asteroids, it's not global warming, but that it is the elite with their open air genetic engineering. I mean, I just saw last week a major university study with this new salmon they've approved that within controlled conditions, they did test and that the genetically engineered chimera, it's a cross species, it's only part fish, extincted the other salmon within 40 generations. And that's 40 generations in the open sea. We know that they've for over a decade have part spider, part goat uh, chimera creatures, genetic mutations that create body armor in their milk. We know that uh, the major GMO companies aren't just coming out with eight major food crops, but hundreds and hundreds, and that they are literally rewriting the genetic code of the planet, and they don't even care if it has dangerous uh, implications. The real threat is this scientific elite uh, that has literally walled off humanity in a kind of arrested development and they write about this, and the establishment in articles written by Bill Joy and others have openly discussed the fact of, do the elites even need humanity? Or are we garbage that has to be taken out? And you read the official United Nations plans to reduce the world population by at least 80%, and you realize that this entire world government, in their own words, is being built as a kill grid. And what's crazy is, it's so horrific, even though it's publicly available information, the average person can't face it. Once you've seen the road, you'll understand what I'm about to say, but it totally resonated. We all know Veritas. We know truth because it's something that was already in us, and we see it as self-evident when another fellow human being has experienced and thought the same thoughts you're having, but just from a different perspective, and that these men and women could come together and make this film, that this author could write this book and could put out such veritas. It is just a work of extreme beauty and touched my soul at the deepest places. Even though it's ugly, through that ugliness, it lets you understand how important goodness is and love and honor and family and self-defense. Are you with the good guys or are you with the bad guys? And do you carry that fire inside you that even as we're becoming nihilistic and more and more evil, and even as people look around them and say, everybody else is evil, I'm going to be evil. 
It's saying, no, I'm going to carry the fire in myself. I'm going to be good. I'm going to try to be pure. I'm going to try to be loving. I'm going to try to be honorable. It doesn't mean any of us are perfect, but you're striving. You're carrying that fire inside of you. And so I salute the filmmakers, and I salute everybody else who sees this film and is touched by it, uh, because this is truly the greatest masterwork in filmmaking that I have ever seen. One week ago today, I went public against the propaganda piece, Coney 2012. And my only regret is that I didn't come out against it more hardcore. Because we've been proven 100% right. And I'm not happy about that. You know what's happening? Congress has got resolutions to invade all of Africa, introduced yesterday, saying because of the film Coney 2012, I've done more research now, and it turns out George Soros, Samantha Powers at the White House, Obama, they're all behind it. And of course they are. Many of them are in the film, like known war criminal George W. Bush, who launched the war in Iraq that killed over a million people. This is so incredible. They are now invading with NATO troops, UN troops, Australian troops, and it turns out that World Net Daily last year already had this information and was exposing it. And it's got Soros, it's got Obama, it's got the UN all saying that they would use humanitarian cover, war is peace, to invade Africa. And here is the resolution in the House now, bipartisan, racing through. And I've got a copy of the resolution right here. Here is the bill. The resolution introduced calls for, among other things, expanding the number of regional forces in Africa to protect civilians and placing restrictions on individuals or governments found to be supporting Coney. All this is is a pretext to invade all over the continent using AFRICOM, the new U.S. command that's been set up there. Now, we saw last year the U.N. go into the Ivory Coast and kill tens of thousands of people and overthrow the elected government and install a new nightmare system. We've seen Angelina Jolie and others hail Libya as the model of the new humanitarian war, which has killed over 40,000 people. They're exterminating the blacks. The, the place is a living nightmare with most of its power and water off. They have wrecked the jewel of Africa that was helping industrialize the whole area. The big global corporate interest at the UN and Agenda 21 openly do not want the industrialization of the third world, especially Africa. They want them in backwards squalor. They fund different warlords and then turn on them later to keep that continent in constant conflict so the big interest can come in with their mercenaries and easily take over any area they want. The UN has been caught financing and supporting massacres in the name of environmentalism, pushing people off their land and killing people. And that's why I get so angry when I see a bunch of cynical people in the Coney 2012 movement talking to adults like their kids going, it's fun, oh yeah, we're gonna do something. It's non-threatening. It is a total psyop. This is how they come in and actually get the population through Facebook, through Twitter, through social media to get behind all these new wars and proxy wars and behind revolutionary groups funded by the globalists who start these wars in Africa, Central Asia, the Middle East, you name it. I wish I was wrong about Coney 2012, but unfortunately I was absolutely right. You look at who funds them. It's J.P. Morgan Chase. Uh, you look at the cynical glamour shots of the people picked out of central casting of the do-gooder, you know, liberal white person there to help people. And now they're saying, oh, there's this bad black man. He hurts children. I mean, it, it, it's literally at a Sesame Street level in these Coney videos where they go, hello, everybody. It's fun. We're going to get the man worse than Hitler, worse than Bin Laden. It's fun. He is the world's worst. Adolf Hitler, Osama Bin Laden, Joseph Coney. It's literally the best piece of propaganda we've ever made. And meanwhile, it's the U.N., engaged in most of the slaughter in Africa, bar none, it's the big culprit 
in its own documents meant to carry out genocide while getting all of the bleeding hearts of the West to give money to UNICEF and all the rest of this to help the Africans. They have photo ops with Angelina Jolie handing out food to the starving you know, kids that are dying. This is so horrible, it's so evil, and it is the most sickeningly transparent propaganda I've ever seen. I mean, look at Bono, who has raised massive amounts of money to supposedly help poor people in Africa. And then you learn he's given a little over 1% of the money he's raised actually to the groups, and he's a front for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, who's carrying out eugenics and population control, again, under the rubric and the banner of humanitarian aid. This is the West, under State Department Memorandum 200, openly stating that their goal is to use war, famine, and poisons and vaccines to reduce population in the third world. And it's got all these Hollywood stars and people as the fronts for it, many of them believing that they're actually helping people. Here's the good news. Across the media spectrum and across the world, especially in Uganda, people are coming out in droves saying this Coney thing is a fraud, it's a pretext to invade. Now that they admit the invasion is beginning, people are really waking up and the thing has imploded. And everyone is seeing it for what it is, slacktivism. A bunch of trendies now getting behind pro-war humanitarian invasions. So the good news is people are seeing right through this propaganda and very quickly. The bad news is the globalists, the big mega corporations that are going to loot Africa even worse than they have in the past with this new neocolonialism have already pulled the trigger. They're already got their special forces scoping everything out in the last year on record. Now the big invasion uh, is about to start. And if you dare criticize the mass murder that's about to take place, well, you're not a humanitarian. You see, they get a bunch of idiots and a bunch of trendies to sign on to a war. And once they've done it, they don't want to admit that they were conned and they'll commit to it all the way. And of course, the goals of this weren't just to invade Africa, it's to set up the International Criminal Court uh, of the totally wicked UN as the arbiter of all good. And they've got hundreds of people they want arrested and um, next on the list are warlords in countries all over Africa that just so happen to be uh, sitting on top of gold, diamonds, oil and other precious minerals. And so it's very, very elementary. They simply have a bad man piece that they move onto the map wherever they want. This is the face of our enemy. Look at him, the Eurasian butcher, the reveler in atrocities of world criminals. This and they didn't the have Bin Laden anymore, so they said, here's this Hitler, there's Bin Laden, here's the new bad guy. You can all feel good now with your five minutes of hate directly out of 1984, and you can all scream that war is peace uh, and get behind this. Peace! And our populations are sold on war in the name of humanitarianism. It's so horrible to see this happening. And it's so sad to see people conned. The globalists don't invade countries because they want to help people. They invade them because they want to exploit them and because they want to reduce their population. That's on record. And because they can't scare us with fake WMDs anymore, because they've been caught with other war propaganda. Over and over again, they've now gone to a more sophisticated model of calling it a humanitarian intervention. Doesn't matter if it's not true. By the time people figure that out, the war has already happened. And that's what they've done here. People are getting sophisticated. That's why the system's having to package war now as peace. But for all of you trendies out there who've already committed to this lie, and so you don't want to admit you've been conned, and so you're going to defend it no matter what, listen. If you really want to help Africans, go volunteer over there, bring them water filters, bring them medicine, do research into real charities that actually help people. They're out there. Don't give money to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and their front with U2's Bono, who openly only gives about 1.5% of the money he raises to them, and that's with strings attached. Stop trusting people just because they dress like a rock star. I mean, th this is sick. This is sick. And I beg of you to just look at the articles we posted here, go research it for yourself. This is all run by the controlled left globalists who are a bunch of eugenicists and who are extremely dangerous and who want to loot the daylights out of Central African resources. So if you actually care about humanity and you actually don't want to see people in the third world slaughtered, get up off of your fat, 
trendy asses and research this information and find out it's true. For God's sakes, have some decency. I'm done. The ball's in your court. In the 1950s, Universal Pictures put out a classic sci-fi horror film, The Thing. And it's been likened to a uh, carrot from outer space they dig up in the snow that had crashed in Antarctica on the south pole of this planet, dug it up, and then it was basically a shapeshifter uh, that would uh, devour its prey and then copy them. And then, of course, they had the John Carpenter classic in 1982, uh, which is probably one of the uh, best sci-fi horror films ever made, in my humble opinion. But you see, we live in the real world, and truth is stranger than fiction. No, we haven't had an alien that crashed millions of years ago in Antarctica that's been thawed out and is now at a research facility uh, absorbing uh, the crew with a eye towards invading the mainland and taking over the entire biosphere of the planet Earth. No, 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 that's not happening. And, of course, they're now re-releasing uh, basically a remake of the 1982 from the reviews I've read. No, I'm talking about the real thing, the real deal. I'm talking about genetic engineers, transhumanists, working for the globalist, who in their own words admit, going back to the 1970s, that they had a plan to patent every major food crop and then every major life form, prolific life form on this planet and put artificial genes, genetics, DNA, RNA into them to manipulate viruses, bacteria. And now that's been done with tens of thousands of different species. In some cases, hundreds of different species are being spliced together. You know about spider goats that are part goat, part spider that produce body armor in their milk. You've read about the super salmon uh, that university studies have shown will extinct the uh, normal salmon that are in the ocean. And these salmon, uh, different varieties have been mixed with other fish, insects, plants. The list goes on and on. You see, that's the real thing. Uh, you're eating corn, you're eating a GMO potato, and it's had insect genes and other traits added to it. It's had pharmacological traits in the BT corn and other crops where a uh, pesticide is engineered to grow inside the corn to where field mice and insects can't eat it. If they do, they die but then you are fed this. My point is, as we prepare to enter 2012, we have a global ruling class that are playing God and who quite frankly don't know what they're doing. I mean, they were able to foresee with their futurists and their think tanks, hiring the top minds in the world, uh, what could be done. Uh, but they are endangering the planet itself while constantly distracting the public with fake environmental crises like carbon dioxide that is 0 0.0360 of the atmosphere. The New World Order, simply put, are people trying to play God. They've studied how humans operate as if they were an alien coming here from a foreign planet. They have funded literally hundreds and hundreds of universities for more than 150 years to study every facet of psychological, spiritual, uh, physical processes that take place. And they have tested and refined incredible tools of social control, propaganda, chemical control through the water and food supply. This is all on record. The globalists have also, for at least 80 years, engaged in lethal chemical and biological as well as radiological tests on prisoners, foster children, military personnel, the list goes on and on. 
You know about injecting people with syphilis. You know about uh, the horrors of children being radiated by the thousands in atomic studies. You, you know about forced sterilizations going on right into the 1980s, or at least you should know about that. That is only the tip of the iceberg. And it's being done to test these systems, but also to test the personnel and to create larger pools of individuals that will carry out these type of activities because they enjoy the power, because they believe the end justifies the means. The point is the global ruling class believe they are a separate species from us and openly write about this. They believe they have transcended the common man and are actively trying to poison and also socially dumb down the general population so that we will fit in to the mold and the typecast that they've made for us. So when you see movies like John Carpenter's classic or this new one uh, that just came out, remember that the real world is a lot stranger than what Hollywood screenwriters can come up with. And sure, it's not as sexy, it's not as shocking uh, as a young heroine fighting the monster from deep space. And there aren't bodies splitting apart and, 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 and spewing out tentacles with razor sharp teeth. And heroes standing up to it with flamethrowers and dynamite. No, in this war, the thing, the globalist system of control is simply taking over species after species, infecting every major food crop, every staple food animal, and splicing new systems into their DNA that irrevocably spread into the entire family. Take the case of corn, going back over a decade, close to 90% of all known corn varieties, and there are thousands originating uh, in Mexico, have now been infected. And the latest numbers I saw is that there is no known major cultivated crop unless it's in closed laboratories that has not been infected. Everything is being infected. So in the thing, it shows under an electron microscope the alien cells metastasizing and taking over the natural cells of the husky uh, or of the human that it's infected. But in reality, this is already happening to us. But it doesn't happen right away. You see, if a GMO crop was put out that caused people to mutate and bleed out and die or turn into something else right in front of you, you would recognize it as a threat. But because it's a slow, creeping methodical death, you're not aware of it. We're designed to face a frontal assault, a saber-toothed cat jumping out against a troop of hunting Cro-Magnon. We are not designed to deal with poison that's been added into our environment. We're designed to just basically adapt to it or die. And so the globalists have developed a very, very sophisticated, soft-kill, incremental, ambient genetic Armageddon takeover system where it just slowly is ramped up. If you look, please, for you and your family's sake, for the future of this planet and the life forms that developed here over untold eons, there is a total revolution by the, quote, scientific class in their lust for power, in their lust for extended life, uh, in their lust for super weapons to dominate the globe. They have already opened up a thousand times a thousand Pandora's boxes. And if you just look at the admitted studies in guinea pigs, rats, mice, dogs, uh, monkeys, where the life cycles are in weeks, months, or years, instead of human life cycles being in around 76 years, in every major study within three generations with every major GMO crop where they've had cross-species splicing and uh, genetic chimera cross-clone manipulation, in every case within three generations, the genitals shrivel up to nothing. Fertility goes down to almost zero. Those that ate the genetically engineered soy, they didn't actually show the problems in the first generation. 
The second generation was slower growth, slower onset for maturity, but by the third generation, that's when nearly all of the adults had lost the ability to have babies. There are more horror movie type mutations uh, where most of the young are born dead or deformed or the young are born small, mentally retarded, with hair growing out of their mouths, eyeballs on the back of their head. And within three generations, it does get like a John Carpenter movie, The Thing. This is not by accident. They stack these traits and, and, and genetic engineers that we've interviewed who work for these companies have said, hey, this potato is sterilizing the rats. They're like, don't worry about that trait. Just move ahead. So there are Trojan horse traits that have been added to all of these. This is 21st century warfare. And of course, that's just the tip of the iceberg. When we talk about chimeras and cross-species clones and the island of Dr. Maru type things that are happening that H.G. Wells predicted over 100 years ago would come to fruition. The real revolution and why the globalists are so arrogant is they've created new classes of vaccines. They call them vaccines. That's a diversion. They're really genetically engineered nanotech, uh, and they advertise it soon. We've already developed it, but soon we're going to get approval, they say, of a vaccine where you'll never be angry. You'll never be sad, or you'll never want to drink alcohol or use cocaine because the virus actually goes in and changes your brain chemistry. Listen to me. The facts are in. Please, for your own sake and the sake of our species, let's not let these control freak psychopaths mutilate and vandalize and irrevocably damage the biosphere and the ancient genetic system of this planet so they can be on a power trip and play God. Look at the fruits of the New World Order. Most cancers have more than tripled in the last two decades. Diabetes has doubled in the last decade. All sorts of new cancers that never existed before are now appearing. Scores of vaccines have been found to be implanted with sterilants, cancer viruses, microplasms, uh, nanotech microplasms that are purely artificial. The United States has the highest rates of every major cancer in the world, including breast cancer. And the system always talks about giving more money when you buy food or go to a movie to uh, try to create cures for breast cancer instead of finding out why it's all skyrocketing, why pancreatic cancer is skyrocketing, and why the system's trying to block vitamins and minerals from the public. Again, the globalist might as well be a space alien from 15 trillion miles away who crashed in Antarctica and got dug up and wants to wreck this planet and totally genetically absorb it. Like John Carpenter's The Thing. Might as well be. The globalist covered up the fact that Fukushima was many times Chernobyl and that the radiation levels were rising all across the United States. And so the EPA's response was just to raise the level of isotopes, in some cases, 100,000 times what they said was previously safe. This is the type of self-destructive, truly demonic, is the only word to describe it, behavior that we see coming out of the ruling class. And it's time for people infected by cynicism uh, and by hatred of life to really ask yourself, is this what you want to be part of? The things that the globalists create are malformed abominations. The entire biosphere is being absorbed. It may already be irreversible. The life cycle of these rats and mice and guinea pigs is just a few years. And within three generations, near total infertility and adult mental retardation, total deformities, stillbirths, just, just a wreck species. We are eating the same stuff, but on average, we have offspring every 20 years and already look at the mental retardation, all the new uh, problems, all the new cancers, the diseases, and we are just one generation into this. The mercury alone in the vaccines, major study shows, is causing 
massive, irrevocable DNA damage that we're already seeing in this generation of your 25 years or so. The numbers are off the chart, but it's damaging the eggs of the girls that are being born now. And they've got cadaver studies on young children that have died, young girls, and they've looked at their eggs. They're nearly infertile. If an alien from a foreign planet wanted to come in and infiltrate and destroy humanity, it couldn't do a better job than the globalists have done. All right, you've been warned. Ridley Scott, arguably one of the greatest living directors, is set to release a prequel to his 1979 mega-hit, Alien, Prometheus. One of the most anticipated sci-fi films in recent memory, Infowars.com research analysis shows Prometheus is not just a film, but a revelation of the method, revealing the deepest secrets of the Illuminati mystery religion. I do have a lot of contacts in the media, as uh, viewers and listeners know, and I have been able to secure a copy of an early script, and it follows very closely from the trailer I've seen and other leaks. And I'm not going to give the entire film away here, but in synopsis, this is a film about the origins of humankind with a super race of near-immortal genetic engineers who are contemplating a genetic overwrite or rewrite of the planet Earth. When meddling humans stumble in to the magician's laboratory, they are punished for their trespass. It was so wrong. The so-called space jockey is the advanced species that have engineered humans back on Earth and produced the bioweapon that we know of as the classical alien that burst out of your chest after feeding on the food in your intestines. The reason we're taking time out to examine Prometheus is because its storyline, its plot, mirrors that of many ancient societies. And the ideas presented in Prometheus are at the core of Western secret societies. These are ancient civilizations that were separated by centuries, and yet this same pictogram was discovered in every one of them. Please tell me you can read that. I think they want us to come and find them. Across the world, we see evidence of early civilizations' obsession with what they believed were off-world influences. From the Nazca lines in South America to the pyramids of Egypt, we see artifacts, testament to early man's obsession with off-world manipulators. Every ancient culture believed they were communicating with men from the sky. Ezekiel with spinning wheels of fire landing and creatures with blue space helmets approaching Ezekiel and giving him a drug to take and then he has wild hallucinations. One could say that Prometheus is simply art imitating life and putting a 21st century spin on the beliefs of the Dogon tribe in Africa and the Aztecs of Mesoamerica. Eric Von Donegan, more than any other living person, has popularized the idea of chariots of the gods and that our planet has been visited and manipulated by off-world creatures for thousands of years. But the systems that he popularized were regurgitated whole cloth from ideas developed by the ruling class of this planet. And I want to be clear, every major globalist we look at, going back more than 160 years, is completely and totally obsessed with the idea that off-world aliens are controlling this planet and giving them hidden knowledge. By the 1870s, T.H. Huxley Group and their X-Club was dominating the Royal Society in England. The dominant theory within the X-Club was that humans had been seated here, along with most other life forms, by advanced beings from space. From the inception of Darwin's theory on the origin of species, evolutionary scientists never believed for a minute that life simply started on its own. That evolution is not some random, slow system developing by chance, 
but is actually directed by off-world seeders, terraformers, creators of worlds. Even the discoverer of DNA, Francis Crick, promotes the idea that life was seeded on this planet in what he calls directed panspermia. It is part of the larger myth of transhumanism. Huxley, Darwin, Wedgwood, the Galtons, they all interbred in an attempt to create this transcendent Superman. The governing class of this globe believes that they are channeling advanced technological systems given to them by ancient alien species. And the science fiction of the last 150 years, whether it's Jules Verne or H.G. Wells or those that came before them, is obsessed with this and they're on record part of secret societies who believe what they're promoting is actually reality, but knowing that the public is not ready to accept it, they cover it under the guise of fiction. And the film Prometheus is completely constructed around the secret religion of the Illuminati, who believe that they are transcendent and becoming the Superman. We can create cybernetic individuals. We are the gods now. Blurring the lines between fiction and reality, we see a futuristic presentation of the technology conference TED. The keynote speaker is the founder of the Wayland Corporation, Mr. Wayland. There he describes Prometheus stealing fire from the gods. From the Titan Prometheus, our first true piece of technology, fire. The transference of fire, or the first technology to man, is only the beginning of his transgressions. Prometheus is a titan and the creator of mankind who attempts to elevate humans to the level of gods and is punished. The Illuminati believe they have stolen the fire of true genius from the gods. Biotech, nanotech, fusion. As man attempts to become godlike, we release potential forces that can and probably will destroy us. I want to say this in summation. We're not facing off-world genetic engineers that the elite believes created this planet, whether that's true or not. We're facing the global technocrats that are splicing every plant and animal and insect you can imagine together, that are creating chimeras with hundreds of species within them, giving rise to super viruses and bacterial mutations. We are already seeing within three generations in rodents total sterilization and massive deformities in these animals. And we have proven from the Rockefeller Foundation documents and other reports that this is part of a long-term program to wreck the general public's DNA. This is the global elite who have fantasized about off-world genetic engineers creating them actually in a 160-year-plus program developing the sciences and technologies to put this into place. Whatever you say about the Illuminati, they have got patience and they have had incredible vision. But I believe humanity needs to hear the truth and understand this is being carried out against us all. Because we have a choice to stand up now, but only a short window and say no. I know the plot of the film. I know how it ends, but I'm gonna leave that for you to discover. The point is, the film itself is only a revelation of the method, an externalization of the hierarchy. Smith and do all kinds of you, things. You even you know? sell guns. We even. Uh, we, well, oh, God, a rabble it, slave with a weapon. It's disarm him. Get the guards, disarm him immediately. It, it, one of the slaves has a weapon. Raise the alarm. I want to be crazy, crazy like Alex Jones. And yet, having a gumption without presumption to know what's going on. Then I can throw bananas at the global clowns and hear aristocratic moans. I want to be crazy, crazy like Alex Jones. I went looking one day on the internet just to see what I could find. When I heard this talk show maniac just proudly speaking his mind. 
It was really wild, but the more I heard, it made a whole lot of sense to me. I want to thank you, Alex, for opening my eyes and helping the blind to see. I want to be crazy, crazy like Alex Jones. And yet having a gumption without a presumption to know what's going on. Then I can throw bananas at the global clowns and hear aristocratic moans. I want to be crazy, crazy like Alex Jones. Heads on the TV screen with an arrogance of fist and vision. Talking about what's been a going on around the world and here in that nation. They all seem to turn like a pack of wolves when Alex goes on the air. In spite of the facts, they launch their attacks, and I just don't think it's fair. I want to be crazy, crazy like Alex Jones. Have enough gumption without a presumption to know what's going on. Then I can throw bananas at the global clowns and hear aristocratic moans. I want to be crazy, crazy like Alex Jones. Yeah, I want to be crazy, crazy like Alex Jones. I'm your Christian leader. Never mind skull and bones. Never mind Bohemian Grove. Never mind my actual policies. Just buy my rhetoric, buy my lies, because you're my slaves. We're going to put in a Democrat later who works for the exact same people, and you're going to laugh at them when they do it. All you Democrats that hate the Patriot Act and all you Democrats that hate the police state, you're suddenly going to love it. <laughs> Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. Mm -hmm.